What's up everybody, Kyle here and today we're going to talk about carbon fiber. So a few months ago Lamborghini brought out the new Huracan Performante and with it they unveiled a whole bunch of fancy forged carbon trim pieces. There's been a lot of buzz about this new carbon, it, it looks pretty cool, they're putting it all over their cars, but nobody's really saying what it is or what the difference is between regular carbon fiber and they're also not saying why they're only using it on trim pieces. So I did a little bit of research and I managed to find this scientific paper that was published by the engineers and scientists that work with Lamborghini. And uh, I'm going to go through it with you today and I'm going to tell you what makes forged carbon fiber better or different than regular carbon fiber. So forged carbon fiber is actually a pretty new material and it was really only invented about seven or eight years ago. So it was initially developed between airplane manufacturer Boeing and Lamborghini and then for some reason Boeing moved away from there and was replaced by Callaway Golf Company. And the first time we saw forged carbon fiber was actually back in the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento concept car back in 2010. And it was also unveiled in the Diablo Octane Callaway drivers but this is a car channel so we don't really care about the golf stuff. So I'll focus on the Lamborghini. Uh, it was used in the suspension components and I think a few other areas, but it never actually made it to production until the Huracan, as far as I know. So what is forged carbon fiber? Well, regular carbon fiber is made from these sh like fabric sheets of carbon. That's sort of like a, it's a woven sheet that they place in a mold and then they put resin on it and it's cured at high pressure, high temperatures. And it takes a long time. It's a very tedious process. And that's part of why carbon fiber is really expensive. Forged carbon, on the other hand, instead of using a woven sheet, it used, uses chopped fibers that they then put in and put the resin on. And they can cure it at high pressures, but it doesn't need the high temperature. You can sort of think of it as like fiberglass, but with carbon instead of glass. So why would you use this over regular carbon fiber? Well, there's two, reason, two main reasons, really. Uh, the first reason is that it's fast. They can, regular carbon fiber, it takes a long time to set. It takes hours and hours to bake it in an autoclave. It's very, very labor intensive to make things out of regular carbon fiber. Whereas the forged carbon fiber, uh, I'm not sure how they do it. Maybe they spray it or they just lay it out. I don't know, but they can fill the mold, put the resin in, and they can set it in like five minutes. It drastically reduces the production time and it just makes everything a whole lot easier. The other thing is that because you're not working with sheets, you're working with a fiber, you can make a lot more complex shapes with forged carbon fiber. You don't have to worry about, you know, getting the sh a sheet of something into a mold. You can just sort of stuff it in there and it'll fill all kinds of crazy shapes. So if this stuff is so great to work with, why aren't we seeing it everywhere? Well, one is that it's invented by Lamborghini, so I would imagine they have some kind of patent on it. And two is the strength. Regular carbon fiber is just as strong as steel, but it's like a third of the weight or something crazy like that. Much, much better material in, in terms of strength per weight. This forged carbon fiber, on the other hand, I'm going to throw a, uh, a graphic up on the screen here. You can see we've got a strength comparison here between aluminum, regular carbon fiber, and forged carbon fiber. Now you might notice on the top there it says that for aluminum they're using the minimum yield strength, and for the carbon fiber they're using the ultimate strength. Now, if you're interested in the difference between those, just Google it, it's fairly simple. Uh, all you need to know is that they are comparing uh, failure points of the different materials. They just have slightly different names because they behave differently under load. But they are a, it is a fair comparison of the, the failure strength of each material. So you can see that the aluminum fails at about 260 megapascals. And then these two, uh, uh, the prepreg and the RTM, uh, those are both just sort of different types of traditional carbon fiber with the, the fabric weave. Um, and uh, I'll get into what quasi-isotropic means in a second here, but you can see those are about 600-700 MPa. That's a, roughly the same as a high-strength steel or titanium. And the forged composite is 246, so it's roughly equivalent to aluminum in strength. It's a lot weaker. The other thing you'll see here is tension modulus. So what that is is the stiffness of the material. So strength and stiffness are different things. Strength is literally just the amount of force the material can take. Stiffness is how much it's going to deflect under that force. And you can see here that the forged composite is actually roughly equivalent to the other types of carbon fiber for stiffness, but it is a lot less stiff than aluminum 
and uh, also steel as well. So why isn't forged carbon as strong as traditional carbon? Well, that comes down to that quasi-isotropic part. So isotropic, what does that mean? Isotropic means that a material will behave in the same manner no matter what direction you're pulling on it. So for example, metals like aluminum, steel, copper, pretty much all metals are isotropic. You can pull on them this way, you can pull on them this way, you can bend them, you can twist them. They're going to react exactly the same way. That's isotropic. Quasi-isotropic means that the materials will behave the same under very specific conditions. So for example, in one plane, it will, no matter which way you pull it in that plane, it will react the same way, but maybe if you start bending it or you go at a different angle, it'll behave a little bit differently. So basically it's isotropic under very specific conditions. And the reason that the regular carbon has these properties is because of that those sheets that they use. They're layered sheets and the weave is actually very important. When they're making uh, when they're making parts with traditional carbon fiber, you have to be very careful about what direction the weave is going because that can change the properties of the material. Forged carbon fiber, on the other hand, is isotropic. It behaves just like aluminum or steel. You can pull it in any direction you want. It's a lot more predictable in that way. And that's because it doesn't have very ordered fibers. These microscopic fibers are all oriented sort of all over the place. So when you back up to the macro scale, it all sort of looks the same. So how does that make it weaker? Well, with regular carbon fiber, it has that ordered structure, so it can be aligned in just the right way to get maximum strength out of it. That's where the, the direction of the weave comes in. But when it's sort of all over the place, you're sort of bound by the, the weakest bonds. A forged carbon part is only going to be as strong as the weakest bonds between those molecules. And when the fibers are sort of all over the place, those weakest bonds are sort of all over pointing in any which direction. So that's why it lowers the overall strength of the material because you can't take advantage of a more ordered structure like they do in traditional carbon fiber. So forged carbon is quite a bit weaker than traditional carbon fiber, but there is a big advantage to this sort of random molecular structure that it has, and that is it's much less affected by geometry of the part. One example of that is holes. So a, for a traditional carbon part, it, let's say you needed a, a hole for a bolt or uh, maybe a pass-through or maybe you just wanted a hole to save some weight. That hole greatly affects the structure of the weave because it's no longer a, a solid sheet anymore. Once you cut a hole in it, it sort of it ruins the structural capabilities of it a little bit. Sort of like if you have a t-shirt with a hole in it and you start pulling on it, that hole is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the carbon fiber wants to do the same thing. Forged carbon, on the other hand, doesn't have that structure, so you can put holes in it anywhere you want, and it's not going to behave any differently than, say, aluminum or steel. So that's one more thing that makes it just easier to work with. So to sum this up, forged carbon fiber is just as light as regular carbon fiber, but it's a whole lot easier to work with, and it gives manufacturers a whole lot more flexibility in the types of parts that they can make from carbon fiber. The downside is that it's not as strong. So for now, you'll probably see forged carbon limited to things like trim pieces and bodywork, or things that need more complex shape. But because of that lower strength, you probably won't see them in structural elements like the chassis or suspension components on a production vehicle. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video. Remember to like and subscribe. You can also check me out on Instagram. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.